Muncie has a lot to offer the community through events and activities that we want our students to enjoy, and Ball State offers plenty to see, do, and experience. And we want our friends and our neighbors to join us right here on campus for our latest offerings of artistic and cultural enrichment. I'm Ball State President Jeff Mearns, and this is Cardinal Compass, Campus and Community Conversations. From the campus of Ball State University on Ball State PBS and Indiana Public Radio, this is Cardinal Compass, Campus and Community Conversations. At Ball State University, our promise is simple, to empower the success of our students. Our students benefit from immersive learning, innovative academic programs, and state-of-the-art facilities. Ball State offers a distinctive yet affordable educational experience and the ideal environment to prepare for a fulfilling career and a meaningful life. We inspire Cardinals to transform their communities, to revolutionize their industries, and to make a difference. We fly. Are you ready to fly? Hello and welcome to Cardinal Compass. I'm Kyle Smedley. And I'm Brendan Mullet. There are many places and events throughout Muncie that Ball State students may not know about. Cardinal Compass's Jemiah Thomas reports on one of those events. Fire Up Downtown Muncie gathered many of the town's local businesses for an evening of fun and excitement. Local gym Perfect Fit Plus is just one of many businesses that opened its doors to Ball State students. I'm Brian Matheny with Perfect Fit Plus. We're located on Jackson Walnut right here at the corner. I'm encouraging all Ball State students to come down and check out the gym. Our uh, membership is $49 a month and uh, all students are welcome. And they weren't alone. Local businesses all over Muncie encourage students to stop by and see what they have to offer. One of them being Unk's Barbecue, who also made an appearance at the Fire Up event. I love it. I love it. I love cooking and I love to see the smile on my customers' faces when they eat the food. I want to put the best barbecue out there in the world. This annual event was held at the heart of downtown Muncie and introduced students to local vendors, live entertainment, and even exciting street performances. With the number of attendees skyrocketing to over 12,000 people this year, Fire Up Downtown hosted visitors of all ages and professions. I've been a police officer for going on 16 years, and these are some of my favorite things to do because we get to come and interact with everybody, we get to have fun and interact with the little kids, and it's just an absolute blast, and I love it. Whether showing their school spirit at events on campus or getting to know the Muncie locals at a community event, Ball State students have a variety of fun field activities to choose from. Students can find out more about events held in Muncie by visiting downtownmuncie.org or following Downtown Muncie on Facebook. In Muncie, Jemiah Thomas, Cardinal Compass. Joining us now is Cheryl Crowder, Event Director for Downtown Muncie. Michelle, you've lived in Muncie for about 40 years now. What drew you to this position? So um, downtown actually was what drew me. Uh, the position originally didn't exist, but about 25 years ago, the administration and Ball State um, and the convention center, other folks in the community decided that downtown was important and it needed some work. It was, she was kind of tired and in need of an infusion of some love and money. Um, so downtown development was uh, created and my role as the event coordinator at that point in time was uh, created to help introduce people, reintroduce people to downtown. So. Yeah. You said that downtown kind of drew you to Muncie in general. What was it about downtown that appealed to you? So Ball State drew me here for mm -hmm. sure, but downtown is what has kept me here. Mm -hmm. um, the architecture particularly, I was uh, part of a theater group. Um, architect, young architects, theater people, artists were living downtown because no one else was at that point in time. Uh, so it was very inexpensive space. Um, it, was, it, was, it was wonderful. Um, but my theater group was what actually brought me downtown. We agreed to strip all the woodwork in the third floor of the Patterson wow. building, sight unseen. It was a lot of woodwork. Um, it, but it, it was really w where I fell in love with downtown. Yeah. And it's got me there. Yeah. You talked about how when you first started with downtown, it kind of needed a bit of a makeover. Um, how have you seen downtown grow and change throughout your time working there? So downtown was really pretty much a, a desolate, dirty, deserted, abandoned space. And now it really is a place of community pride. It's where people choose to gather, whether it's to for a celebration, to meet up with friends, or just kind of like high five, I made it through the day. It is one of those places that people choose uh, as, as their, their 
place to their third space. Yeah. Now, Sho, when it comes to planning an event, um, what are some factors that you need to consider that are kind of behind the scenes that some people may not see or know about? Uh, plan B, always plan B, but also, I mean, what is its community value? Uh, what audience are we trying to attract? Um, is it financially feasible? Is it sustainable? Those kinds of things. Yeah. In the recent events, you talk about just the, the process that goes into them, but in the recent events that you guys have hosted, what are some that have had the most success? Well, I for sure would say that Fire Up Downtown has been our most recent and really our, our biggest event in the probably the last five years or so. Um, it really brings a little bit of something for everyone in the community. You don't always get that with every event. Sometimes they're like kind of niche to different groups of people, but downtown is one of those events that really is very inclusive and offers something for, for everyone. Also, the Three Trails Music Series mm -hmm. has really a, been a dynamic addition to downtown. It's very much elevated the experience that you can have. Uh, they're, you know, Grammy-nominated artists. We do four free concerts a year. We host oh. four, three, four free concerts a year yeah. at Cannon Commons. And um, thank you to Rick Ziegler, who actually yeah. does the production of those events. But it definitely has uh, brought an elevated experience to downtown. Yeah, and the Ziegler Foundation and, and Rick Ziegler have been really great. He's got many connections in the music business. Absolutely. And then it's a great venue to have a concert in the summer. Um, except when the trains roll by <laughs> in the middle of a music set. It's <laughs> awesome because most of the mu musicians work it into their set. They're just mm, kind of like, wow. ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. So if they'd never done a train song before, they do it then. It, it's a distinctive part yes. of the experience. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Um, Cheryl, since you've lived in Muncie most of your life, and President Mearns, I'd love to get your answer sure. after as well, but why do you think it is important to immerse Muncie with Ball State? Well, I mean, both offer so many different things. And it really, we are all part of one community. It's mm -hmm. like not Ball State and community, although it's very easy to look at it that way. Um, I think we, we all gain something from one another. Um, the, the community has a lot to offer students and faculty, um, but the students and the things that Ball State offer also has a lot, have a lot for the community, whether it's cultural experiences or lifelong learning. Um, things, you know, the students are so important in seeing where the future is going. You know, you can learn a lot if you'll just listen to, mm -hmm. to the people who are around you, whether they're students or community members. There's just a lot to be learned all the way around. Right, and I was so grateful to Cheryl this year. Ball State was a major sponsor of the third mm -hmm. annual uh, Fire Up, uh, but we're grateful that they moved it to September. It had previously <laughs> been in August before the semester started. Mm -hmm. So there really wasn't a chance to tap into mm -hmm. all of the students here. So we've got a close uh, relationship. We're, we're glad to sponsor those events because it produces a great return for the community and for the university. We're also working with Rick Siegler to complement the Three Trails music uh, series. Uh, next summer, mm -hmm. beginning next summer, there will continue to be four concerts in July and August uh, downtown. And then there will be three concerts at the Brown Family Amphitheater oh, yeah. on campus nice. after students return. It's just one way in which we can coordinate. We don't want to compete with mm -hmm. downtown. Right. We want to complement the great work that Cheryl and so many other people are doing downtown. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of very grateful for that. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> kind of jumping off like what you were saying, like as a Muncie native, I've heard people in the past say that they felt like Ball State and Muncie were kind of in separate bubbles, even though they are in the same town. But have you found that that bubble is starting to burst? I, I think it requires intentional cooperation, I and that's what I was talking about a moment ago. Right. You know, there's a sense from many of our students that downtown is so far away. It's, it's from, from the corner or from the scramble light. Mm -hmm. It's about a mile, maybe a mile and a quarter. I it's about a 20 yeah. minute walk for some young, vigorous people like you. Yeah. And so, but there's a sense that there isn't either, that it's a long way away or there isn't much to offer them. Yeah. And the converse is we still continue to hear that some folks in Muncie don't feel welcome on our campus. They mm -hmm. feel that it's not just physically removed, 
but that they don't know where to park or they don't mm -hmm. know where uh, these cultural assets or sporting events are held. Yeah. So again, we're working more closely to try to break down whatever those barriers are, to try to understand mm -hmm. what are the barriers for people in the community to come to campus uh, so that we can break down those barriers and welcome more of our friends and neighbors to our beautiful campus and to all of the arts and culture and athletic events that happen here all throughout the academic year. Yeah, Cheryl, do you feel similarly? Absolutely, absolutely. When I think about when I came here 40 years ago, there was very much a separation. Um, I think as the community changes and the, per the, like the perceptions change, um, and I think that is all it really is, our perceptions. And so the even small things like the banners on the bridge, yeah. like literally the, there is a, literally a connection between Ball State and downtown particularly, and you're right, it's just a mile, one mile, it is so close. But I think as uh, we continue to do even small steps, um, and I think President Mearns has been great at, at reaching out to the community and encouraging the faculty and the students to be involved. And um, from our end, we will always encourage people to come and experience what Ball State has as well. Mm. Yeah. That's awesome. We have about 30 seconds left, Cheryl, but before we wrap up, what do you think is the top thing that you think Ball State students should see in Muncie? Uh, so, I mean, downtown as a whole, for sure, mm -hmm. it's very hard for me to pick one thing out because I'd be really in trouble when it's I go back home. It's just got a lot home. of members. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, but, you know, like, just experience the community. Don't be afraid of it. Miss bus runs for free for students and you mm -hmm. cannot get lost. And even if you feel that way, there are always helpful people around and everything ends at the terminal downtown. Yeah. So it's uh, wonderful, but uh, just. There's so many things to do. The students need to find their place there. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I think that's all the time we have. Cheryl, thank you for joining us. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah. With all the events happening off campus, there are still some fun experiences happening right here at Ball State. Cardinal Compass's Grant Coven reports on University Theater's recent production of Kinky Boots. Throughout the months of August and September, Ball State University's theater department has been hard at work to put on the show Kinky Boots, based off the Broadway hit. While the show just wrapped on September 29th, the cast reflected on their time and their dedication on being a part of an iconic production. As a uh, sophomore at Ball State, this is my first time performing in a show uh, in front of a crowd. So having that first show experience, it was super exciting night one, and then even throughout the rest of the show, it's been such a treat to be able to like get out on stage for uh, the thing that I've been super passionate about. While the seats are mostly filled by students who have an admiration for the arts, the stars of the show explained why the show isn't just for students on campus, but also the Muncie community and lovers of theater. I think the show is really interesting because it really goes into the depths of what it means to be a man. Uh, it goes into masculinity, it goes into femininity, it also goes into fatherhood and how that can impact a guy. Um, but also, specifically to Muncie, it's also about what it takes to save a dying town. And what's so fascinating is Muncie, way back when, really needed something, and they got Ball State University, which rejuvenated the whole city. And that kind of has to do with our play, is we're trying to rejuvenate this factory to save this town. It is such a huge production with big numbers, um, but also along with the big dance numbers, big costumes, crazy scenery and stuff, it really does have a deeper meaning, a good theme that you learn at the end of the show. While the cast and crew of Kinky Boots may have taken their final bow on September 29th, you can expect to see more out of the University Theater and Ball State's Department of Theater and Dance for their next production of The Three Musketeers, opening on November 15th. This is Grant Coven. Cardinal Compass. Joining us now is Michelle Kinsey, Communications Manager of Engagement at Ball State. Now Michelle, you've been involved in Ball State or Muncie in some form since 1988. How do you think your history with working in Muncie helps you with your current role here at Ball State? Woo! Friend, in 1988, that's a long time. <laughs> I actually, I came to um, Muncie to go to Ball State, specifically to go to Ball State, study journalism, and stayed here ever since. Uh, I got a job my second year at Ball State at the local newspaper, then the Muncie Star, and then turned into the Star Press. I was there for uh, decades. And I was did all things arts and culture, arts and entertainment. Uh, had an arts and entertainment magazine. So did a lot of things both in the community and at Ball State, obviously covering arts and culture here. 
Uh, then came to Ball State years after that to work at Ball State PBS and Indiana Public Radio. And then now I find myself uh, in the Office of Community Engagement. So I feel like all roads, really, as cliche as that sounds, they all led to what I'm doing right now. Uh, and it's bringing all of those things uh, together to be able to uh, really establish that bridge between Ball State and the community in many different ways. Yeah, um, and we kind of asked Cheryl a, a similar question, but mm -hmm. I'm curious from your perspective, especially given your your history working with the community, what is the process in your current role of scheduling and planning events for Ball State students? Oh, first of all, it's a blast. Uh, I would say uh, the first thing you have to think about is, you know, what will the students be interested in, right? Uh, so I'll use the $2 tour as an example. That's an event we have uh, every fall, right the first week of school. We invite students to kind of get off campus a little bit, but to go to the village and kind of immerse themselves in the village businesses, enjoy entertainment from local artists. And so we think about, right, what are the students gonna be interested? What do they need to connect with? Uh, then if you're thinking about uh, events that are off campus, we have to consider transportation. Mm -hmm. We have to consider, and then the most important thing probably is communication and getting the word out because you have to take so many different avenues and find so many different ways to reach students and get them uh, involved in events, whether they're on campus or off campus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd love to get both of your thoughts on this next question. Uh, first Michelle, then President Lawrence, but um, what is really the step-by-step -step process when it comes to emerging Ball State in the community? Hmm. Um, partnerships, right? Okay. I think it's those connections, those relationships that you build uh, in the community that um, make those events, make uh, students feel comfortable in the community, uh, whether it's an immersive learning project or a volunteer opportunity or a super fun event like Fire Up Downtown that was just mentioned earlier. Uh, I think it's, it's all of those uh, things together um, have to make students feel comfortable. And I think that's the goal, the underlying goal uh, for any sort of activity that is going to engage uh, students and immerse them in the community. And I would say there's two really important components of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, first of all, it has to be intentional. Yes, right? yeah. the, these, these opportunities for students to be out in the community and in downtown and mm -hmm. conversely for people in the community to come here, yeah. they don't happen by accident. Mm -hmm. And then the second ingredient is, as Michelle said, a partnership. That is, we have mm -hmm. to understand what are the interests and needs of our partners in the community uh, that they can, that they can uh, participate in mm -hmm. or enjoy here and vice versa. We need to listen to our students to find out what more do they want beyond campus so that we can introduce them to the opportunities that exist in the community. Yeah. And I think we're doing that better and better together. Absolutely. Every day. Yeah. Absolutely. It's definitely mutually beneficial. Right. It's yeah. a collaboration. It is. Absolutely. Well, Michelle, we know that President Mearns and even Cheryl felt strongly about this, but during your time either as a student at Ball State or working at the Star Press before you came back to work at Ball State, did you feel that the university needed to better immerse itself within the Muncie community? I did. I, I think um, there are always uh, ways that we can improve that relationship, but I think when I first started, there was, as a student mm -hmm. at Ball State, uh, for example, there was an absolute divide. Mm -hmm. You would often hear, don't cross the river. You don't go on the other side of the river. You go. You don't go downtown. So I immediately <laughs> went downtown because <laughs> I was like, "There's got to be some cool stuff uh, happening down here." Found some amazing music venues and arts groups and wonderful opportunities. And then, because I was already working at the newspaper, I was able to share that and really mm -hmm. encourage uh, Ball State students uh, to come downtown and enjoy all the things that that Muncie had to offer. I I think we have come a long way yeah. and really everything from partnerships you know Ball State is partnering in a bunch of downtown events or just citywide events but then Ball State is being very thoughtful as you mentioned before President Mearns about providing transportation sometimes it's as simple as that we want students to come downtown and enjoy fire up or the mm -hmm. arts walk uh, along Walnut Street we provide 
buses for that, okay. shuttles back and forth, yeah. which makes it a lot easier. And part of our, one of the aspects that we have not yet worked on in our village project is actually building a pedestrian and bike friendly lane that will go directly from campus or the village right downtown over the Washington Street Bridge or connect to the White River Greenway. Because again, as we talked about earlier, it's a 20 minute walk, it's probably yes. about a four minute bike ride. Right. Mm -hmm. And so once we have that readily accessible pathway, I think that will be mutual beneficial, mutually beneficial. It's yeah. gonna be awesome. I am so excited yes. about that, <laughs> yeah. about both places because yeah. I mean, Muncie is ready. It's ready for the amazing things that are happening in the village. The momentum ha is already building and has been building for years downtown. I think it's gonna be a wonderful relationship between the two. Yeah. yeah, well, Michelle, we've got about 45 seconds left here, but before we come to a close, we just wanna ask, what do you feel like is the one thing that Muncie citizens should know to immerse themselves in the Ball State community? Is there some event or location in particular? Ooh. Um, I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to cheat a little bit, Kyle, and I'm going to say the cultural corridor, yeah. um, which includes several locations on campus. If you go online and you uh, go to bsu.edu and look up the cultural corridor, mm -hmm. you will find all of these amazing opportunities and most of them free and fun for the entire family. Everything from the Glick Center for Glass, Christie Woods, uh, Emmons Auditorium, and the beautiful Brown Amphitheater, which is new, DOMA, uh, the other galleries that are kind of sprinkled across campus. There are so many ways to engage on the campus, and I hope the community takes advantage awesome. of that. Yeah. yeah. Well, Michelle, that is all the time that we have. Thank you so much for joining us here this morning. Thanks Thank so you. much for having me. It's a blast. Yeah. Well, President Mearns, we want to give you the final moments of the show to kind of summarize your thoughts and give you a reflection on today's conversation. Well, I'm grateful to Michelle for the work that she does and the passion that she has for this work. And Brendan and, and Kyle, thank you very much. You know, as I've said since the moment I arrived, there's so many great assets for our community on campus and so many good reasons for our students and our faculty and staff to enjoy what's happening in Muncie. Uh, there's a lot of progress, more work to do, but we hope that those of you who are listening will take Michelle's advice and find out what they can take advantage of here on campus, and we hope that we can continue to do more with our students to encourage them to take advantage of all the opportunities that exist uh, in our city and throughout our region, because as we all know, we are better together. Well, thank you, President Mearns, and thank you all for joining us. I'm Kyle Smedley. And I'm Brennan Mullet. Make sure to join us next time for Cardinal Compass campus and community conversations. At Ball State University, we welcome you as a learning partner from day one. Our students bring creativity and determination to each aspect of the learning experience, from the classroom to the community. At Ball State, we help students turn an emerging passion into an enduring purpose. Our beautiful campus, welcoming environment, immersive learning, and collaborative culture provide the ideal place for you to pursue your journey to a fulfilling career and a meaningful life. We fly. Are you ready to fly?